Welcome to Post Harvest Handling and Seed Technology. I am Febi Paglinawan and I will be your instructor for this lesson. Post Harvest Handling is the stage of crop production immediately following harvest, which includes cooling, cleaning, sorting, and packing. The instant the crop is removed from the ground or separated from its parent plant, it begins to deteriorate. Post-harvest treatment largely determines final quality, whether a crop is sold for fresh consumption or used as an ingredient in the processed food product. The most important goals of post-harvest handling are keeping the product cool to avoid moisture loss to slow down undesirable chemical changes and avoiding physical damage such as bruising to delay spoilage. Production practices have a tremendous effect on the quality of fruits and vegetables at harvest and on post-harvest quality and shelf life. Both quantitative and qualitative losses occur at all stages in the post-harvest handling system of the distribution chain of perishables from harvesting through handling, packing, storage, and transport to final delivery of the fresh produce. Factors affecting post-harvest losses vary widely from place to place and are more and more difficult. The role of post-harvest handling is to delay the death of commodities for as long as possible. The objective of post-harvest handling is therefore the creation of understanding of all the operations concerned from harvesting to distribution so as to enable people to apply the proper technology in each step and in such a way to minimize losses and maintain quality as high as possible during the distribution chain. A farmer growing fruits for his family's consumption does not mind too much if his produce has a few bruises and scars and if it is not packed for suitable transportation to a market at a certain distance. Meantime, if he is producing for the market at any distance from his own farm, he must have a different attitude if he wants to get the best return from his produce. He must know about the quality requirements wanted by the consumers and the proper containers needed for the transport. Here are two examples to help explain the importance of post-harvest handling. Example number one. By knowing the market and its needs, the grower can and must judge how important are the requirements of appearance, maturity, and flavor of his produce for the consumer. These requirements are strictly related with maturity indices, which are influenced by a proper harvesting time. A farmer must therefore know the proper harvesting time of his produce. Example number two. The farmer must decide whether the investment in packaging will increase his revenue from the crop. It will be of no value to buy expensive containers for his produce if the harvesting is not properly done and bruises and scars damage the content before packaging. It is more important for the grower to change his attitude towards reducing post-harvest losses through improving harvesting than to think that the purchase of expensive packages will automatically solve his problem and increase his income. Now let us talk about the challenges in handling fresh fruits and vegetables. Fresh fruits and vegetables are detached but still living plant parts that continue to respire and have metabolic activities. They also have a large extent to maintain protective systems such as physical barriers and physiological defense mechanisms. This is in contrast to minimally processed fruits and vegetables that have a larger surface area with tissues that are cut through and open to microbial attack, drying and dust. If not eaten, the products have a limited lifetime before it dies and decays. Eating quality is at its highest level at harvest or it will reach a peak during the post-harvest period if the particular product has a clear maturation process 
and has been picked and ripe. Both the keeping quality or keep ability and the eating quality as well as the rate of quality change are determined by a series of biotic and abiotic factors pre- and post-harvest. The post-harvest factors include species, variety, microbial load, presence of pests, temperature, radiation exposure, and atmosphere composition including relative humidity and possible mechanical stress or damage. These factors in turn affect the rate of the deterioration process, which are essentially physiological and microbial. The post-harvest lifetime is not just the time spent in various stores, but also includes time for washing, sorting, packaging, transport, and distribution. In fact, many exported perishable plants or plant products spend most of their time in transport, wholesale, and retail. Therefore, different fresh fruits and vegetables can have post-harvest lifetimes ranging from less than a week to up to a year. The shelf life is determined as the time between a starting point and an end point when the product has reached a minimum acceptability rate for human consumption under defined storage and distribution conditions. Intake of fresh fruits and vegetables of sufficient quantity and quality is not only necessary for maintaining good human health, but, it also, but is also very important for sensory satisfaction. On the other hand, sufficient sensory quality is a prerequisite for achieving a high enough intake. Important words to familiarize. Number one is physiology. Physiology is the branch of biology that deals with the normal functions of living organisms and their parts. Whereas morphology is a branch of biology that deals with the form and structure of an organism or its parts. Post-harvest physiology is the scientific study of the physiology of living plant tissues after they have been denied further nutrition by picking or harvesting. These are functional processes in the plant material after harvesting. Post-harvest handling. It is under the primary processing, which is involved with the handling of produce to make them more suitable for the end users. Post-production is the general term applied to operations from harvest to consumption for food and non-food crops. Primary processing is any activity involving the handling of crops to make them more suitable to manufacturers, processors, or consumers. Post-harvest handling of perishable crops are operations for marketing, consumption, or food processing while maintaining the fresh state of the produce. Raw material handling or post-harvest handling of fruits and vegetables intended for processing. Minimal processing or post-harvest handling of fruits and vegetables that have been peeled, sliced, cut, and packed ready to cook or to eat. The resulting products are called fresh cuts generally classified as convenience food. Secondary processing or post-production activities that involve conversion of harvesting crops into stable products that can be changed into other forms. Post-harvest technology covers the series of procedures, operations, steps, or movements undertaken in order to control changes in harvested crops, including the technological aspects of marketing and distribution. Post-harvest horticulture is a more specific term to cover the integration of these sciences and handling technologies of, of perishable crops. Mature is the stage of fruit development which ensures attainment of maximum edible quality at the completion of ripening process, wherein immature 
refers to unripe commodities, fruits that are very firm, lack flavor, and have not yet reached top eating quality. They are usually small for their size and have poor color and texture. Maturation is the developmental process by which the fruit attains maturity and it is the transient phase of development from near completion of physical growth to attainment of physiological maturity. When we say ripe, this is the condition of maximum edible quality attained by the fruit following harvest. Only fruit which becomes mature before harvest can become ripe. Ripening involves a series of changes occurring during early stages of senescence of fruits, in which structure and composition of unripe fruit is so altered that it becomes acceptable to eat. It is a complex physiological process resulting in softening, coloring, sweetening, and increase in aroma compounds. Perishables are crop whose food and aesthetic value can be maintained for only a short period of time after harvest. Examples are the fruits and vegetables. Whereas, durables are goods not for immediate consumption and can be kept for a period of time. Example is the cereals. Next is senescence. Senescence is the final phase in the ontogeny of the plant organ, during which a series of essentially irreversible events occur which ultimately leads to cellular breakdown and death. Shelf life is the length of time for which an item remains usable, fit for consumption, or saleable. Visual qualities are essential elements that you can see or are visible to the naked eye. This includes color, shape, texture, and form. Non-climacteric are fruits that ripen only while still attached to the parent plant. Their eating quality suffers if they are harvested before they are fully ripe because their sugar and acid contents do not increase further. Their respiration rate gradually declines during growth and after harvesting. Maturation and ripening are a gradual process. Examples of non-climacteric fruit include cherries, cucumbers, grapes, lemons, and pineapples. While climacteric are fruits that can be harvested when mature but before the onset of ripening. These fruits may undergo either natural or artificial ripening. The onset of ripening is accompanied by a rapid rise in respiration rate generally referred to as the respiratory climacteric. After the climacteric, the respiration rate slows down as the fruit ripens and develops good eating quality. So examples of climacteric fruit includes apples, bananas, melons, papayas, and tomatoes. Last but not the least is food safety. Food safety is the assurance that the food will not cause harm to the consumer when it is prepared and or eaten according to its intended use. Let us talk about bio biochemical processes of perishables. First on the list is transpiration or water loss. Water loss is a process by which water in plant tissue or cells is lost by evaporation as water vapor. Water stress results when the tissue water content deviates from the optimum. The potential for water stress increases sharply in harvested produce. Why? Because fruits and vegetables are high in water content, hence have the propensity of water loss after harvest. So here is a list of consequences of water loss. We have direct marketing loss, visual quality loss, Textural quality loss, loss of flavor and aroma, nutritional quality loss, discoloration, increased susceptibility to post-harvest disorders, accelerated rate of senescence, or quality deterioration, and increased vibration damage of produced in container. Second is respiration. 
it is a series of chemical reactions wherein complex cellular substances are broken down to simpler compounds in the presence and or the absence of oxygen. So respiration has two types. One is aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration needs to be maintained after harvest but at reduced rates in order to maintain quality for longer periods. This also generates energy essential for maintaining life processes in cells and tissues. Whereas anaerobic respiration is the type of respiration that needs to be avoided after harvest, as it is responsible for off labor and physiological disorders due to production of toxic levels of metabolites. So the relationship between respiration and perishability is that the rate of quality deterioration of harvested produce is generally proportion ge generally proportional to respiration rate. The higher the respiration rate, the shorter the perishability of or post-harvest life. Last, we have ethylene. Ethylene is considered as the only gas phytohormone. It is commonly known as the ripening hormone because it initiates fruit ripening. It is also called a senescence hormone because it accelerates deterioration. Ethylene regulates many aspects of growth, development, and senescence, which may be beneficial or deleterious to the commodity. Ethylene gas has unique roles, functions, and benefits. These are quicken fruit ripening process, helps leaf abscission, combined with auxin, triggers the formation of flowers, and stimulates thickening of the stem. Also, it strengthens stems and branches. On the other hand, the disadvantage of ethylene gas or carbide is if given to crops too many and uncontrollably, fruits will not only ripen faster but also rot faster. So it is important for farmers and gardeners to pay attention to fruits resulted from this ethylene gas treatment. 